welcome back to another video hope you are having a great day and today we have a solution that will allow us to control any computer or any other device over our network so if we are looking to centralize a place with our computer and other devices and then we want to control that single computer on several places of our home over the network this is it basically it will allow us to send the hdmi signal over our network and unlike other devices that we have seen in the past that will send the signal over a single ethernet cable in this particular case it will take advantage of our existing network so we will be able to receive the hdmi signal and we also be able to control the device via usb with a keyboard a mouse a gamepad or even with infrared if we want to. Now this is the ORE HDMI over IP extender, possibly the best solution in the market to achieve this goal over a existing network. So we are going to check it out. I will leave a link down below with all the specifications that you can check out, prices and whatnot, just next to the link to KeysFan, just in case you are using a Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer and you still haven't activated. We will find budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below in the video description, it will get even cheaper. So just in case you want to check that out, I will leave the link down below. But right now, let's take a look at the Aure HDMI over IP extender. Inside the package we will find the HDMI over IP extender encoder slash transmitter, the HDMI over IP extender decoder slash receiver which we will see a little bit better how it works. We will also find two infrared cables, two power adapters and one user manual. Now the HDMI over IP extender encoder slash transmitter has one HDMI input, one Ethernet port, infrared output and one USB type B. On the other hand, the HDMI over IP decoder slash receiver has a HDMI output, one Ethernet port, a infrared input and two USB A ports. The HDMI over IP extender encoder or transmitter will connect to the PC. It will receive the HDMI signal that comes out of the PC and it will connect via USB to the PC so that it, we are able to control it. It will connect to our network switch and send all that signal. Then on any other point of our network, we will place the HDMI over IP decoder or receiver that will connect the HDMI port to any TV or projector, we'll connect the network cable to the switch and connect the keyboard and mouse so that we can control the computer at a distance, which allows transmission up to 4K 30 hertz if it's up to 40 meters or 1080 60 hertz if it's up to 150 meters without any latency. But let's check out some examples. And now with a local setup where we have one computer, the transmitter, the receiver, and they are both connected via this Ethernet switch. Now, it's a local connection, just as an example, but we could connect the receiver anywhere on our network without being directly connected to the transmitter. Now, to understand better the process, we have a USB cable right over here, type B, to type A which is connected to the computer and will allow us to control the computer and we also have the HDMI cable that comes out from the computer and it will feed in the signal on our transmitter. Now the transmitter is connected via one Ethernet cable to this switch and then another cable is connected from the switch to the receiver and on the receiver we have a peripheral which at this moment is a combo of keyboard and mouse and if i want i can control the computer and one of the things that we can notice is that there is no delay at all so if we want to play games or anything else we can without any issues whatsoever so the hdmi cable connected to the receiver will be the one that we will connect to 
our display. And of course, this is a local setup, as I said, just as an example. But if I was on another room, I just needed to connect the receiver to my switch, and then I could connect the HDMI cable to one of my projectors or my TV, and I can be controlling the computer that is here on the basement from my bedroom or from a living room. Now, I did not connect the infrared cables included because at this moment I'm not using any remote. But if we have any peripheral, like a remote control that we want to use for Netflix or Plex or Jellyfin or any other kind of app, we can take advantage of the infrared and connect these two cables right over here. So in terms of local setup, this is it. The greatest advantage that we have here is that instead of connecting directly the receiver to the transmitter, we are connecting to the network. And although it's locally, I can just pick this one up and take to any other division of my home. And I just need to connect it to the ethernet cable. And that is it. And now we are on the ground floor. And the computer is down below on the basement, on the office, and we have the receiver right over here connected to my main switch. And I've got a keyboard and mouse, the same setup that we have down below, connected right over here. And the HDMI cable is connected to my TV. So in this example, I'm controlling the computer that is on the basement using the keyboard and mouse right over here. And as we can see, and by the tests that I've made so far, the delay is exactly the same, which is non noticeable if there's any. So we can control the computer and do anything that we want, playing games or browse our email without having a computer right over here. And the great thing, and I'll show you an image, is that we can have multiple receivers. So I can have one receiver on this TV, I have another receiver on another TV, and that will allow me to control one single computer on several divisions of our home using one single network. Now, this is important. I am connected to my main switch. And this is important because we need to be connected to that main switch to be able to connect that. We can just control the computer anywhere on our network can do anything that we want, which is just awesome. So we did use a computer on our example, but we can use any other device. We can use a DVD player, an Android TV box, Apple TV box, or any other device that we want, including devices that use infrared, because we have the option to use the USB, like we did with the computer, which is the more complex and the funniest one to test it out. But we can also extend it to infrared. And if we have a DVD player, or any other device that uses an infrared remote, we can use so without any issues whatsoever. And if we want, we can even add more devices. So I could centralize a place with a computer, with an Android TV box, an Apple TV, and so on and so forth. And then using a HDMI switcher that we have seen right over here from Ori, we could connect one of those to multiple sources and then connect to one of these, and then just select the one that we want and use it on anywhere on our house, which is a awesome, more complex setup, but really interesting. Now, there's only one limitation that I did find on my testings, and that is the switch. We will need to use the main switch for our connectivity, the existing switch of our home. If we start using more than one switch, then the connection will not be successful between the two devices. So we will need to use the main switch to do all our connections. And that is it. If we are on a setup like that, we will have no issues whatsoever. Hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, so don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. If you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing it so and activating the notification so that you might help to grow this small community into a little bit bigger, which is just a awesome, awesome community. So thanks for that. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.